What up? This is Ramash Queen covering movies, TV, and entertainment. And here's my review of HBO Max animated series Harley Quinn season three. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, ring that bell, so you could get notified whenever I post new videos. So let's rock this. First up, I would like to say thank you to HBO Max for granting me the screeners to this new season. This review is mainly for those of you, my fellow Harley Quinn fans who already know what's up. Now, if you guys recall, in the last episode of the previous season 2, when Harley and Ivy drove off into the sunset, Thelma and Louise style, chaotically chased by cops, the screen then cut to black and then it said, THE END. As if to suggest that that was the series finale. I was so bummed out when that happened. I mean, no way they're gonna call it quit right when Harley and Ivy officially became together, right? So, when they announced season 3, you can imagine how ecstatic I felt. I was jumping up and down like Tom Cruise on Oprah's couch, and I watched all of them in one sitting in one afternoon straight up, and it was epic. This is the show's raunchiest, funniest, craziest season yet, and Harley and Ivy locking lips, swapping spit every other minute, is H.O. to the T. This new season also feels like an ensemble, with more episodes branching out to Nightwing, Batman, Catwoman, Batgirl, and especially Joker as a good guy. So there will be times when you will wonder, where is this going? Why does the focus keep shifting away from Harley and Ivy a lot? But trust me when I say that the story ultimately comes back around, because it's all connected. Well, mostly connected. One thing for sure is that luckily, Harley Quinn still does not pull its punches in terms of the violence and the jokes and that's exactly what I signed up to watch. Based on DC characters developed by Justin Halpern, Dane Laurie, and Patrick Schumacher, the mayhem and madness continue in season 3 of this biting and uproarious adult animated comedy series. Wrapping up their Eat Bang Kill tour, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy return to Gotham as the new power couple of DC villainy. Along with their ragtag crew, King Shark, Clayface, Frank the Plant, Harley V strives to become the best version of themselves, while also working towards Ivy's long-desired plan for transforming Gotham into an Eden paradise. Voice starring Kelly Cuoco, Lake Bell, J.B. Smoove, Alan Tudyk, Diedrich Bader, Sonia Lathan, and Christopher Meloni. Okay, so what is the overarching overall theme in this new season 3? Well, it's simple and it boils down to this. Relationship is very, very hard. The first few episodes are hilarious because Harley doesn't want the honeymoon to die. She constantly wants to continue the romantic gestures and she genuinely adores Ivy. So she showers her with gifts, surprises, praises, and compliments, killing people in Ivy's name left and right. But Ivy just wants to get back to doing the work and having a purpose. Now, I'm not saying that the flame between them is out. No, they're still very much passionate for each other. But it's a rough and tumble road for them to eventually get to honesty and communication and getting used to each other's shortcomings. So the story and the humor this time are built around that arc. And I appreciate the fact that the writers are exploring that, not at the expense of everything that we love about the show. And one of those things is how Harley and Ivy proudly embrace not just their sexuality, but also their sexiness. Harley, for example, would brag several times about her butt and her thong, and she's not one bit apologetic about it. I mean, these are two great looking ladies who like to fuck each other's brains out, and the animation is not shy to go there, or at least, it dares to push the boundaries within the rating system. And you can tell that Kaylee Kuoko, who voices Harley, is game for all of it. And she's just having a blast delivering those lines. Speaking of which, some of the jokes are somewhat political. Not sure if that's on purpose, but they keep bringing up universal healthcare. So much so that I thought that maybe the writers are Bernie Sanders supporters. Now, as I mentioned earlier, some of the episodes deviate away to cover other DC characters. Actors. With the exception of Joker good guy episode, those other detours are, well, they tie into Harley and Ivy's journey. Some of them are there to illustrate or say something profound 
that Harley and Ivy as a couple can learn from. But also, if you ask me, and this is just my theory, maybe the writers, producers, showrunners are testing the water. By that, I mean, obviously, this TVMA Harley Quinn animated series is a success. So perhaps they want to expand it into a potential possible spin-off. Who knows? Not that anything is officially in the plan, but you are going to crack up at how they do Nightwing on this show. As for Harley's teammates, Clayface and King Shark, they too have their own predicaments. Now, King Shark has this whole ridiculous power struggle storyline that culminates in a bloody fight. And trust me when I say you do not want to miss out on that. So to wrap this up, in conclusion, Harley Quinn as a show is as wild and as brazen as ever. And this new season 3 is proof of that. I love their eyes wide shut spin on the Court of Owls. I love Clayface's delusional Hollywood aspiration. I love Ivy stopping halfway through her train of thought. And I love Bruce Wayne's unhealthy obsession with Selena Kyle. All of the character developments in this new season 3 just amplify everything that's fucked up and appealing about these icons. Some of the episodes are also meta and nostalgic, visually disturbing and Twilight Zone-esque. I mean, my god, this is an extraordinarily irreverent show. 